edges in order to make all arches carrying the same load. Yeah, and here a miracle became reality. You, you can see the um, very fresh pictures. I think they are done the, some days ago. And you see how, how this ensemble now works with the canyon, with these six murals, with this contrast of the outer facade and the inner facade. And here it's really the, the what actually everybody was expecting, that we have a landmark building. And I think that is again something where you need a good cooperation with the structural engineer and with the architect to really then finally to, to realize this, this miracle that, that it's a building full of tension. It really shows that it's a cultural building and that is somehow animating the people to be part of this cultural um, center. And that is the outside again, very, very strict facade outside and inside. You have this very open facade which somehow invites people to, to enter. Yeah, I think that is the first step. And uh, although you have very simple um, structure in the beginning, we find with the second viewing details to, to break it. And then you finally have this kind of ensemble where, um, which will be opened hopefully next year. Yeah, coming to a stadium. That's in fact the stadium our office will drive um, tomorrow. So we go with the whole Shanghai office with uh, 60 people to Hainan. <coughs> um, uh, Hainan is of course a very tropical island and all the Chinese say they love Hainan. Why? Because it's warm, it has a lot of water features, it has good smell and of course nice colors. And uh, we were invited for this uh, competition <coughs> of uh, the Haiku Stadium, uh, which is a stadium not only for sport but also for events. So it's a combination of sport and uh, event stadium. Um, of course, studying the island, um, the stadium itself is not far from the shoreline, so you somehow breathe the air of the sea. And uh, as an architect, you always need inspirations, and we really want to find a very a stadium which only can be um, realized in a tropical climate with all the consequences we will uh, show you. It's only uh, it's very short. It's only two and a half kilometers from the from the shoreline. And we first of all for the competition we we designed. The, the master planning, so this is the, the step we are now uh, will present. But we also did the master planning for the overall with, with the hotel, with uh, other stadiums, with indoor stadiums, with uh, shopping areas. So the whole part will be a cultural center uh, for, for, for the, of course, rising tourism on, on Hainan Island. And the idea of the master plan is again these very smooth lines which you see on the beaches, which you see uh, at the seaside. So we want to transfer this tropical feeling into this landscape and into the master planning. And all the stadiums are combined with, a, let's say, with a kind of boulevard which is lifted up on plus one. So you can really walk here, enjoy, enjoy the times, enjoy the, 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 the weather with the world being destroyed by the traffic. So all the stadiums are connected by this, um, by this tropical boulevard. And here you can see the stadium which we then designed. And the stadium is very special. Why? <coughs> because normally the stadium is quite symmetrical and has spectators to all sides. But here we decided to, to make an asymmetrical stadium, which on the west side will have most of the spectators, and on the east side it has only few spectators. Why? First of all, the, the western seats are always the seats which are very valuable, so everybody likes to sit in the west, not being blended by the sun in the evening. 
And uh, we also wanted to, to emphasize the West because you will somehow think and you feel the, the seaside uh, far away, but you can feel it. And this also allows us to not only have sport here, but also a lot of events. Now they have a concert this weekend in this uh, stadium. So you have all these 40,000 people almost sitting here in the West and seeing that uh, um, cultural event. Um, Sven, how did it realize? Well, when, normally when I would give a lecture about structural engineering, I would talk about one of the principles in our office, which is the spoke wheel roof. And the spoke wheel roof is something we often use in order to form a stadium. Yeah? So, as we open up the inner hub, and then we have in the inner ring out a compression ring or two compression rings, we have radials, and then we will flat that with a membrane. But, due to the fact that the colleagues decided, to have a one-sided stadium, it's very different because normally, but everybody knows when you have a bicycle wheel, all the forces are perfectly transferred in the in the circle. So it's it's very nice. But now, at, at, in the in the situation of um, of of high of, of high, it's very different. When you have only one-sided stadium, yeah, then you use cantilever, right? Like you see here, that's a typical example. We found out during our practice during the last years that from a certain cantilever lens, a system which uses cable and lightweight materials much more efficient than another one. And so we tried to find out a solution which could use this principle, but also could, could, uh, could fulfill that uh, uh, constraints of being only one sided. Next, please. And as you can see, this is this one sided uh, grandstand when uh, Nico mentioned that there are 40,000 spectators and uh, the columns were inclined, so we created a huge candidate ground of uh, 70 meters. And Heiko is, is an area where we have a lot of wind, and the wind loads are the, uh, really the, the governing load case, and so we have to care about the loads on this huge surface of the roof, and we said, no, this is not a good idea, we have to shorten the cantilever length, that's, that's always what engineer, engineers do. They propose not this kind of structure, they propose this kind of structure, even make everything as small as possible, as light as possible, this saves material. And so we propose to lean that in, and it's, right, it's really easy to understand. You all know the problem from your umbrella, yeah, when you have an umbrella and you're standing in the wind, what happens, in most cases, it falls apart when you would have a roof, which is shaped like that, then the wind is gently flowing across the roof. And this was also a reason for us why we had to lean in this column, and so we reduced the cantilever arm by 15 to 16 meters. Next. But, and uh, the disadvantage of this one-sided system is that we have to break up this bicycle wheel. This would mean it's like you have a rubber, yeah, and you would cut this here, and then it's then it's gone. So there are leftover forces at these edges which we have to handle, and these so we have one-sided roof which is not closed here. And there are remaining forces which we have to transfer to the structure down to the ground and finally from the left to the right side. This is the structure we proposed here. It's a two compression, compression ring solution and the compression rings merge at this cutting point. And you saw that on the, on the bicycle wheel principle and then we have little we have cantilevers, which are cable systems. There's an upper cable and a lower cable. It's a system like that. Yeah, it's like this. You have two compression rings at the back and one tension ring. And the lower cable is acting against the loads going upward, like the wind. And the upper cable is acting against the vertical loads going down, for example, from that load. And as you can see here, we see here that the front edge 
edge, which is also a tension element composed of eight cables, and the radials are cables. These are these are the kind of cables we use. These, they are called fully loaded spiral strands of a diameter like 120, 130 millimeters. And finally, everything is connected to the compression to compression rings, which are from uh, from from tube side section of regular steel. Everything then covered by a membrane. And then we were talking about the facade and. Um, you all, you, I think you already feel that we like these inventions and um, talking about facade in a tropical climate for stadium is of course that you do not um, close facade. So we, we work with lamellas to, to bring the wind into the stadiums but with the help of the lamellas we want to control of course how the wind enters the stadium and it's very important that once it gets very humid and uh, very hot, that you somehow use the wind to cool down the stadiums. And then um, Sven helps us by his parametric um, thinking how to control the lamella. And it's, I think you all know that because you are students in architecture, you all know Grasshopper and uh, Rhino. And so this is, this is the lamellas then are built up as a, as a par parametric model in order to study how much wind will flow through it or how much wind will be kind of driven up or driven down. And this is not only important because it's humid inside, it's also important to know because the amount of wind going in is also influencing the loads on top of, of, the, roof, of the roof structure. So the membrane is then loaded by the internal pressure and the, out, uh, the outside pressure. <coughs> And this is, this, is, this is how we did it and uh, how, what, what helped us in, in, the, in terms of discussion is that we can quickly play back and forth or present back and forth our, our results which then helps us in, term, in terms of the structure to gain the wind loads and in terms of the feeling from in, in the inside where, where we talk about the humidity and the, the atmosphere for the spectators. And you can see the result. Uh, first of all, this asymmetrical stadium with the 40,000 spectators looking to the sport and the venues. You see this very light, like a sail, the membrane, and then you see these loopers which uh, allow the wind, um, that wind gets controlled, as Sven was saying. And you can see again how that is really a, also a kind of landmark stadium where you have these two huge columns which control the light and the acoustics and you can see how you can approach the stadiums by this tropical um, boulevard and that is how you approach it. So it was a very nice uh, cooperation and hopefully we will continue this master plan to realize the master plan and uh, maybe tomorrow and on the weekend we make you some pictures how our team will go to the stadium and later on we go to the beach to have some barbecue. <laughs> Good, so that coming, maybe continue stadiums. Everybody of you, of you knows the uh, swimming stadiums for the World Championship in 2011. And uh, that was a very big success for us to win the first prize of the swimming stadiums. And here maybe we want to explain you how to work with ensembles. So, it is uh, sometimes very easy to, to design one stadium, but once you have to um, create or design three venues, you, you may have to work different. And first of all, it is a very interesting site close to this expo uh, area. <coughs> uh, um, every time everybody entering uh, Shanghai um, from the airport can see the site. And um, our idea was, first of all, working with the ensemble, which were three stadiums, this multifunctional stadium, also for swimming indoor stadium, but also later used for multifunctional use, the natatorium, which is a real stadium with a diving area and would later be used as a swimming pool and a kind of fun uh, um, um, 
transforming, and we have here this kind of amphi theater um, for uh, dining and also swimming. So first of all, the way of positioning these three venues are very important because we use the theme of water, that we created a big water area which somehow brings together the stadiums, which also in the function is very important to control the circulation of many people. So once I have been there during the World Championship of the Swimming event, there, there, there are hundreds of thousands of people um, entering the stadium, so the water also controls the circulation and, looks and gives a very good um, idea. So water is one feature of this uh, ensemble. And here you can see how the landscape, very smooth on the one side and very strict on the other side, created a um, contrast. And uh, we, we crossed this water area by bridges. So even it's very crowded, once you cross the, the, um, the once you use the bridge, you can breathe again. You don't feel so much crowded. Remember how, how crowded it was when there was an expo time in, in Shanghai. And second, we, we, we like very much these bridge ideas. Again, because Shanghai and the Hongpu River, it's very, uh, it's somehow a city of bridges and even the culture of South uh, China also has these kind of bridges. So we like very much bridges. And of course, we like very much the, the neighborhood of the, the river. So when you think to a river, we very often, so we also, I come from Hamburg, so I like very much the idea of ships, of sailing. So the idea of water, of bridges, and the maritime thing was giving us the idea how to create the stadiums. And um, we later will go into details, but first of all, we, we need um, one metaphor. One